Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Brookfield Corporation and the new letter to shareholders from Brookfield CEO, Bruce Flatt. Before analyzing the letter in detail, let's look at the short video clip first. Bruce Flatt recently participated in an interview with CNBC and he was asked a question about overall economy and how their businesses are doing in general in this challenging environment. This is his response. People realize just how big and how broad your portfolio is. We think about commercial real estate and retail, but you also own infrastructure, renewables businesses, pipelines. It, it's huge. Insurance companies. Overall, what are you seeing right now on, on the economy? Look, when you have a almost a trillion dollars of stuff around the world, you see a very broad um, array of things. And it's, uh, look, I would say the economies are slowing, there's no doubt, around the world. But th these businesses that we own are long-term cash flow generating businesses. And we look at them over decades into the future. And the fact is, recessions come and go, um, but these businesses keep growing. So we're seeing enormous investment into infrastructure, into transition um, globally. And that's driving many economies, it's going to be driving economies for decades going forward. So it's actually, it's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. He believes their businesses are doing pretty good. This is exactly the first thing that you can see in his recent letter to shareholders. Each of, the, each of our businesses performed well during this quarter, continuing to generate a stable and growing cash flows and compounding capital in line with our objectives of creating long-term wealth for all of our stakeholders. After this, Bruce Flatt highlights the growth of their financial metrics of the corporation compared to the last year. The adjusted distributable earnings, which is the most important metrics for the management team of Brookfield, were up 24% year over year. This is of course consistent with the recent earnings report of Brookfield Corporation and it sums up the profits of all the operations, investments and equity transactions compared to the last year. After this, Bruce Flatt proceeds to discuss the financial results of each of their businesses. He discussed the asset management business, which their distributable earnings grew by 15% year over year. He then discussed the insurance business, which is still a tiny contributor to overall cash flows of the company. And then he discussed operating businesses like renewable, transition, and infrastructure. And finally, he started to discuss the real estate business, which is the most controversial part of their business at the moment. The first thing he mentioned here was this. Operating performance was particularly strong in our prime retail and office assets during this quarter, growing by 5% over the last 12 months. Furthermore, we expect that as rates plateau and eventually comes down, the continued compound growth of underlying operating cash flows will more than offset the impact of the recent rise in interest rates. Remember that interest rates rise once, but our cash flows can keep growing forever. He actually comes back to real estate in the latter part of the letter, which I'd like to discuss it here. He starts a deep discussion about real estate business and why so many people have different and conflicting opinions about this part of the financial markets. The data we see increasingly show real estate fundamentals as a tale of two cities. As with nearly every cycle, we have seen previously, the highest quality properties continue to perform well, while traditional commodity properties in secondary markets or locations underperform. Brookfield's strategy in real estate is always focused on owning the best of the best. They are consistently tried to keep real estate in prime locations and sell lower quality assets over time. So he then continued to say this, we have always focused on owning premier uh, real estate in the best locations, which is why 95% of our office portfolio is either trophy or class A office space that continues to vastly outperform the broader market. To illustrate, we had nearly 5% same store NOI, net operating income growth over the last year. Yeah, so this is my favorite part of the report in which Bruce Flatt discussed their mistakes and errors in office real estate market. I respect the management team that are open to highlight their mistakes and not basically try to hide them. This is his statement. Of course, not every property in our portfolio has been unaffected by recent market volatility. When you own 7,000 properties, it is impossible not to make a few mistakes. 
But we have always been prided ourselves on being an extremely responsible borrower and our reputation in the capital markets sets us apart. We work closely with our lenders to resolve problems that occur and this tends to come from smaller assets relative to the size of our business, many of which were acquired as a part of a larger portfolio. To protect against these inevitable errors and ensure that always, uh, they, they always remain s small mistakes, we have always had a policy of financing each asset on a standalone, non-recourse basis, which means that any issues with a specific property do not affect any of our properties or our businesses. A few such issues have recently arisen in our portfolio in Los Angeles and Washington DC, given the specific market stress in those cities, but they are discrete to those assets and not material to our overall real estate business, let alone to Brookfield as a whole. This is something that uh, I personally highlighted in previous videos as well. Brookfield basically has non-recourse loan on all of their assets and real estates, and therefore if they default on a specific loan and walk away, the creditors cannot sue the corporation. They can only claim that specific asset. Next, we have Bruce Flatt discuss the business strategy of Brookfield. Our financing structure is built on a few key premises. We always maintain vast capital resources at Brookfield Corporation for rainy days. We have structured access to the public markets for each of our business sectors on a standalone basis. Our financing are recourse only to assets, not to company. And our access to private institutional capital provides us the ability to partner with the largest private investors in the world. Of course, this only works if our financial results are good and fortunately the returns were generated over many decades have been excellent. That's the main reason I decided to invest in Brookfield Corporation instead of different Brookfield subsidiaries like Brookfield Asset Management, Brookfield Infrastructure or Brookfield Renewable Partners. Corporation has access to most liquidity, it has a stake in all Brookfield subsidiaries and the depth of each business is non-recourse, which means in simple English, Brookfield Corporation will benefit from upside of all of these subsidiaries while they don't suffer from their downsides. So owning corporation is, in my opinion, the best move with Brookfield. Bruce Flatt then mentioned that during the quarter, we reinvested 1.2 billion of our distributable earnings back into our businesses to continue to grow their operations. And we have returned 400 million to shareholders through regular dividends and share repurchases. Given the current share price and our view of the intrinsic value of our business, we expect to continue to repurchase shares. They always mention that Brookfield Corporation share right now are undervalued, and I'm happy to see that they not only buy back the shares at these undervalued levels, but also the management in themselves are buying shares of the corporation with their own money. Insiders might, might sell their shares for any number of reasons, but they buy them for only one reason. They think the price will rise. Okay, so Bruce Flatt then discussed the recent acquisition, which includes Origin Energy, which is a gas and electricity company in Australia, Triton International, which is the world's largest intermodal shipping container owner, and CDK Global, which is a software company providing its services to automobile dealerships. He also discussed the liquidity and the balance sheet of the corporation, which is an important aspect of their business. At the end of the quarter, we had 113 billion of group-wide liquidity and 5 billion of core liquidity at the corporation. This is in addition to having one of the world's largest pools of discretionary capital with an approximately 135 billion balance sheet of mostly liquid assets against which we borrow only a modest amount of corporation debt of 12 billion. So as you can see, the corporation debt is only 12 billion dollar and they have large amount of capital ready to deploy. Bruce Flatt finished the letter with a short statement about future opportunities. We have invested successfully through many cycles and our deep resources mean that we will be able to capitalize on investment opportunities that will, that will inevitably present themselves during this cycle. We are readying ourselves for that. I think Brookfield Corporation at the moment offers a unique investment opportunity. I remain bullish on Brookfield even after the recent downturn in the share price of the company and the extreme negative narrative about the future of Brookfield and the real estate assets. 
I understand the risks, but I believe Brookfield has an overall great business model with enough liquidity. They have a great management team. In my opinion, Bruce Flat is one of the top five CEOs in North America who is communicating with shareholders directly and is focused on value creation for shareholders. And they have lots of growth avenues by buying undervalued assets during this time. If you look at this chart, you can clearly see that the share price of Brookfield always went down during various financial difficulties. So this is not something new for this company. For example, in 2008, Brookfield shares crashed by almost 60%, or in pandemic, it went down almost 35%. However, this is a company with a long history of navigating through various financial environment and creating extreme value for shareholders. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you enjoyed the video and you're interested to follow contents related to Brookfield and other Canadian companies, consider subscribing to the channel to see similar content. Always remember that the information in my videos are not financial advice for you to buy, hold, or sell this, these stocks. And you should always do your own research before making any financial decision. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Farewell.